Hi, I'm Maurice Jones, president of Graceland Ministries. Today, we're gonna do part 11, which is a continuation uh, of the Trinity relative to the uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Now, last time, I left off on page 40 of the book because it was, it was um, <laughs> getting kind of hilarious. So I just stopped there and on page 40, they're going to talk about John 1.1. 1, 1. And I I didn't want to deal with John 1.1, 1, 1, okay? Uh, and, and then I realized something. As I was reading this, I, I said to myself, I'm like, it's, it's wrong for the Jehovah Witnesses to not teach their people properly about John 1.1 1, 1, and then throw their people out there to the wolves. Because their, their members are believing that what's written in this book about John 1-1 one, one is true. And I was like, that's kind of sad. And, and then I realized, I said, you know what? It's kind of sad too that a lot of Christians out there that, you know, don't understand John 1-1 one, one as well. And so I didn't want to bring in all the Greek. I didn't want to be technical about it. So I was like, well, you know what? I'm not going to deal with the Bible verse, but you know, that's kind of unfair to those who have never heard about John 1-1 one, one and why is it so important? So I decided that, that um, to go ahead and to do my best to try to teach you what John 1 1 says using the Greek so you can understand what the argument is all about. Okay, so both the Jehovah Witnesses and the Christians can understand what's going on, okay, between the Bible scholars and, and between the Jehovah Witnesses organization and the Christian scholars out there. So that's what we're going to do today in, in, in part 11. We're going to look at John 1 1. But first of all, going back to their book on page 40, it says, but isn't Jesus called a God in the Bible? Question mark. Someone may ask, this is true. Yet Satan is also called a God, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. At John 1, 1, which refers to Jesus as the word, some Bible translations say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. But notice, Verse two says that the word was in the beginning with God. And while men have seen Jesus, verse 18 says that no man have seen God at any time. And that's when I closed the book last time because I was like, that is, that is hilarious. That, that is ridiculous. Uh, because a Jehovah's Witness is, 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 is trying to get you to believe that Christians are saying that Jesus claimed to be God the Father or that Jesus claimed to be the person of God the Father who is Jehovah. See, no Christian says that. No Christian says that Jesus, okay, a man, claims to be a person called Jehovah who is the Father. We don't say that at all. So Jehovah Witnesses are using a straw man or a red herring type of argument. They're building a case uh, against what we call tritheism. Okay, tritheism is the belief that there are three gods. Okay, and so Christians, we do not believe that there are three gods. We do not believe there are three Jehovah's. Okay, out there, okay? Now, we believe there are three distinct persons. You're gonna find these persons in Isaiah chapter 48. You're gonna see the sovereign God, you're gonna see his spirit, and you're gonna see the meat when Jesus says, the sovereign God and his spirit sent me. So you see three distinct persons in the Bible, okay? And so it does no good for a Jehovah Witness to, to try to keep proving that uh, Jesus is not claiming to be God the Father. We know that, okay, please. We understand that, we know that. That's not what the Trinity is all about. Now, to try to prove their case, the Jehovah Witnesses say, look, we can prove to you that Jesus doesn't claim to be the person of God the Father, something that we don't need proof for because we don't believe that anyway, but let's just keep going with them, okay? So they're gonna say, hey, in the Bible, the distinction between Jesus and the Father is this. The Father's called Jehovah. He's the Almighty God. He is God with a capital G. Jesus, at best, is a mighty God. He's a God with a lowercase g. And John 1, 1, is the Bible verse 
that proves that. So to a Jehovah's Witness in their Bible translation, they translate the Bible, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was a God, lowercase g. Okay? Now, when you read the original Greek, this is how it looks. Okay? Now, just stay with me for a minute, okay? Uh, I hope I didn't smear it, but I wrote out for you John 1.1, 1, 1, okay? And so this is how John 1, 1 looks, okay? Now, before you can understand what's going on, I gotta explain some things to you, okay? When you're dealing with, uh, uh, and luckily John 1, 1 is an easy verse to translate, A, and it's an easy verse to explain what's going on here. If you have taken Greek for like six weeks, okay, you can understand what's going on here because it's not very complicated. But when you're translating a Bible verse like John 1.1, 1, 1, you gotta understand what a morpheme is, okay? A morpheme is the smallest part of a word that changes that word, okay? So let me show you what's going on here, all right? Watch this. This is a morpheme, okay? So if you have the word, let's say you have the word log, Okay. You have the word log. Okay, this is called a stem. Okay, this is the word log for word. It's, it's, it's a stem. If you have the word, uh, let's say you have the word uh, right here, theos for God. Okay, you have the word the. The is a stem. Now, a morphine changes the meaning of the word. Right now, this is just the word the. Okay, it has no uh, case, no declension to it. Okay, now. When I add the morpheme, os, see here? Now I get theos, this is called a morpheme. Okay, so when I add the morpheme, os, okay, now I'm gonna get what we call a word, a noun, in the nominative case. Okay, now if I change this morpheme here to oo, now I have a word that's an object of a preposition because theu now means of or from God. Just by changing a morpheme, okay, changes the word. So if I were to change this to u, you get of the word. It now becomes a um, object of a preposition. If I change the morpheme again, add the word nu, at the end nu, I get lagon. Now, it tells us this is a second declension, singular word that's now in the accusative case. It is now the direct object. So that's what a morpheme is, okay? So when you study in Greek, you gotta know your morpheme. So you always look for your morphemes. Because your morpheme will change what a word is. As you can see here, you have the word theos, and you have the word here, uh, theon. These are two different words. You have a morpheme here, this is the accusative case, and you're gonna have another morpheme here. Okay, so that tells us that these two words have two different cases. This is gonna be in the nominative case. It's gonna be the noun of the sentence. This is gonna be the object of the preposition. I'm sorry, the uh, accusative case, the direct object, okay? So, what is this problem with John 1.1? 1, 1? <laughs> okay, the problem with John 1.1 1, 1 is this. It's not a problem that deals with the morphine. It's not a morphine problem that's going on in John 1.1. 1, 1. It's not even a pronoun problem. Because remember, I told you, whenever you're talking about uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, you gotta know your morphemes, your articles, your pronouns, and the Granville Sharp rule. So in this case, what's going on in John 1.1 1, 1 is not a pronoun thing. Because John doesn't say, in the beginning was the word, and he was with God. He doesn't say that, okay? So we don't have to deal with the pronoun. So it's not a pronoun problem. So it's not a morpheme problem, it's not a Pronoun problem. What's going on in John 1.1 1, 1 is what we call an article problem. Okay? Now notice, this is the word ho. Ho logos. Okay? Whenever you have an article in Greek, that means the word logos is now a capital word. Okay? So, if I say ho logos, I'm now going to use a capital W O R D. Okay, now, if there is no article, if I don't have a whole, then Logos is gonna be translated 
a word. Okay, so the article determines whether the noun is proper or not. Okay, or whether it's uh, um, that part of a sentence, like down here, you got the word whole logos again. Okay, so what you see here is this is going to be translated word capital W. Okay, so that's what the problem is. The, the uh, Jehovah Witnesses say this. The Jehovah Witnesses say, okay, when I'm translating a Bible, I see an article, Tone Theon, the accusative case. So this word is going to be translated God with a capital G. Okay? The problem now is this word right here. This word is Theos. Okay? So John 1 1 says, in the beginning was the word Kai, and the word was pros, towards, face to face. The word was what? With God and God. Notice there's no hope. There's no article in front of the word theos. And so this word here should be translated God, a God, okay? Just a plain, simple, lowercase letter. So to a Jehovah Witness, they say, see, the Bible doesn't call Jesus God with a capital G. It calls, it calls Jesus God with a lowercase g. Now, I remember the first time a Jehovah Witness told me that. I was a young kid and I did not know Greek. Okay, and it made sense to me. I, I can still remember that kid taking his thumb and, and, and <laughs> he had like a Greek in your Bible and he took his thumb and he put his thumb right there and he goes, see, there's no article, a God. <laughs> Okay, now, here's what Jehovah Witnesses do not tell people. And here's what Unitarians do not tell people. There's a rule called the Granville Sharp rule of Greek when you're translating Greek. According to the Granville Sharp rule, okay, if you have two words with the same case, with the connective chi, Okay, then that one word can carry the article for the other word. You don't need the article. It's called the Granville Sharp Rule. So as you can see, you got what? Logos. Same morphine, same case, nominative case. Theos, same case. Okay, so now you got the word, you got the connective chi. So now you got the same thing. Whole theos was the word or now you should have a capital god was the word so it should be translated like this in the in the beginning was the word capital w and the word capital w was face to face or towards god capital g and god capital g was the word capital W, okay? Who, or he was in the beginning, face to face with God, capital G. So that's called the Granville Sharp Rule. So when a Jehovah Witness points out that there's no article there and that this word should be translated God, that, that's ridiculous. Because the Greek says you don't have to have that, that article, okay? You don't have to have it there according to the Granville Sharp Rule. So that's why Christians translate it with a capital G, and every Bible does it, except for literal Bibles like Moffat. Moffat may translate it divine and things of that sort, okay? Well, Unitarians, Unitarians might do it that way, okay? So that's that's how John 1-1 one, one looks. That's how John 1-1 one, one looks, and the, the uh, okay, if you follow the Granville Sharp rule, that, that's how it looks. Now. Here's the problem, <laughs> okay? You gotta understand something here. Cause not many Christians are gonna say this, but I, I trust the word of God. I love the word of God. I, so I can say this, okay? Listen, if you read John 1, 1, okay? And you already believe in the Trinity, then you're gonna see Jesus as God with a capital G. That's just common sense. If you carry the idea of the Trinity into John 1.1, 1, 1, you're gonna see Jesus with a capital G. If, if you are a, uh, uh, an Aryan, 
a partial airing like a Jehovah Witness. Okay? And if you believe that God is just one person, when you read John 1.1, 1, 1, you're going to see a God. Okay? You're going to say, you know what? I don't want to apply the Granville Sharp rule. Okay? What I'm trying to say is this. The Christian belief in the Trinity does not determine how to translate the Bible. Don't get into that habit. Okay? Just like the Jehovah Witnesses' belief in partial Arianism should not drive their translation of John 1.1. 1, 1. You see, how you interpret John 1.1 1, 1 is not based on you as a Christian or on the Jehovah Witnesses as Jehovah Witnesses. How you translate John 1.1 1, 1 is based on the New Testament or the biblical writers, especially the New Testament writers, especially John in this case, because they are inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it's what they say that matters. If you go into John 1-1 one, one with the Trinity already on your mind, you can have circular reasoning, okay? If you go into the Bible with, with, with John 1-1 one, one translated a God like a Jehovah Witness, you're gonna go into John 1-1 one, one with circular reasoning. You don't do it that way, okay? Your theological beliefs do not drive or should not drive your exegesis. So who determines whether Jesus is God or not is, not, or not, is an inspired biblical writer. And in this case, it's John, okay? So once again, John 1.1, 1, 1, the reason I didn't want to deal with the Bible verse is because John 1.1 1, 1 is not an overall context verse. John 5.18, is an overall context verse. So John 5.18 should determine or should drive how we translate John 1.1 1, 1 along with the Granville Sharp Rule. Because John 5.18, the Jehovah Witnesses can't touch it. They're gonna try, okay, when they get to 1033. But in John 5.18, they can't, they can't touch it. And, and, and as a Christian, we know that we have the right translation according to the Granville Sharp Rule, but we also know we got the right translation because of 1 John 5, 18. Now, we're going to get to that later. Now, before I get there, I want to say two things. Number one, when you are a strict monotheist like Jehovah Witnesses, okay, once you take that vertical oneness view and you say there's only one person called God, watch this now. Whenever someone does this, you got a right to say whatever you want to say about Jesus. You can define Jesus any way you want to. Once you say, look, I only believe in one person that's called God, I can say this about Jesus, okay? Now notice this, Muslims, for example, Muslims believe that God is one person, Allah. So what about Jesus? Is Jesus the son of God? To a Muslim, no, Allah has no what? Son, so to a Muslim, they can minimize Jesus all the way down to the point of just being one of Allah's prophets, okay? Now, if you ask a true Aryan, okay, do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? He's gonna say, yes, I believe that Jesus is the son of God, but I don't believe he's deity. Okay, so now an Aryan's view of Jesus is higher than a Muslim's view of Jesus, okay? But if you ask a Jehovah Witness, what is your view of Jesus? He says, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. He is created, but he's also a creator. He created all other things. So as you can see, there's a hierarchy of, of beings relative to, not beings, but there's a, a hierarchy of views on how you can interpret Jesus, okay? You can start really low like a Muslim and say he's just a man, okay, or a prophet. And you can work your way all the way up to a Jehovah's Witness who says, you know what, he's created, but he's also a maker, okay? But it's not gonna do you any good, <laughs> okay? Because you are still a strict monotheistic person. So it doesn't do a Jehovah Witness any good to go around saying, hey, I believe that Jesus is a creator and that he was created by God. So what? You're no better off than an Aryan, a full Aryan, who says he's just a created being. You're no better off than a Muslim who says he's just a man, okay? So that's the first thing I wanna point out to you. Jehovah Witnesses, you're going around like you're the greatest. You think you're the greatest and you got the truth because, because you're better than an Aryan or you're better than a Muslim when it comes to uh, your viewpoint of Jesus, but your Christology is still not 
high enough, according to John. According to the Apostle John, you still haven't gotten there yet. Not according to me, not according to Christianity, not according to some doctrine called the Trinity. Even if we did not have the doctrine called the Trinity, you, your viewpoint still is below the standards of the Bible. Okay, that's the first thing I wanted to point out to you. The second thing I want to point out is this. That you're talking about some Jehovah Witness trickery. Okay, now... All right, let's go back to this for a minute, okay? Now, 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 when you when you read the Bible, for example, let's look at um, verse 17 and verse 18. Because the Jehovah Witnesses, they're going to mention verse 18, but they're not going to tell you something. If, if you go to the uh, the Greek text in, 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 in John 17, and I'm going to put my specs on for this one because these are small words, okay? It says... For the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now watch this now. The Jehovah Witnesses quote this part of the verse. They're not going to quote the rest of it. It says this. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he reveals them. Okay? Now... This is what's going on. <laughs> when you read, okay, when you are reading John 1, 17 and 18, when it says no one has seen God, guess what? That word God is written in the accusative case, guess what? With no article. So technically, John 1, 18, if a Jehovah Witness is consistent, if they don't want to apply the Granville Sharp rule, then John 1, 18 should be this. No one has seen a God. There's no article there. Okay? But that's not the problem. <laughs> okay? Now, now watch this. This is a Graceland original. Okay, because I just realized this tonight before we filmed this and I was in a staff meeting. Okay, now watch this. I just realized this tonight. When you read John 1.18, this, this, is, this is crazy. When you read John 1.18 uh, in the NIV, it says no one has seen God at any time except for the Son, Weos. The Son, NIV, West Garden Vortex. When you read it in the King James Bible, it says the same thing. No one has seen the Father except for the only begotten Son. So in both Bibles, in both Bibles that, that, that Christians read, you see the word Son. Okay? Now, I didn't realize this until, for some reason, I, I, I went back and I was reading the... Uh, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses New World Translation on John 1.18 to see if they're consistently translating these, these, these Bible verses. So I went tonight and I looked at it and according to the Jehovah Witnesses, the Bible verse reads this. No one has seen God, capital G, okay, at any time save for the only begotten God, lowercase g. Okay? So, I looked at the Bible verse, I went to the Greek text, or the other manuscript that the Jehovah Witnesses use, because they didn't use to say, they didn't use the text receptors manuscript. I went back, looked in the manuscript in which they use, and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. I said, no one, I, said, I called in one of my staff members who also knows Greek. I called him in, and I said, hey, I want you to read something here, okay? I said, I said, uh, Logan, I said, read that. I want you to, you know, back me up on this. I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm reading this straight because if I'm reading this straight, then, 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 you know, we got something good here. So he reads the text, he stops, because I don't explain to him the context of what's going on. So I have no manipulation on him at all. So he reads the context, and he goes, 
That's crazy, man. That's crazy. And I was like, whoa. So I am reading it right. Okay? So watch this now. Here's what's even crazier. This is a Graceland original. Okay? Watch this now. Almost every Bible translation that uses that manuscript says this. No one has seen God except for the only begotten God himself. Almost all translations, conservative translations, say God twice, except for the NIV and for the King James. We, for some reason, we use the term son. But the Jehovah Witnesses, they use the manuscripts that uses the word theos twice. Now here's the catcher, here's the deception. And here's a Graceland original. You're gonna hear this at Graceland first, okay? Here it is. Watch this. The Greek text says, no one has seen Theon. No one has seen God. No article. Which means what? You learn from our lesson. If you don't see an article and you see the word God, according to a Jehovah Witness, when there's no article, it has to be translated a little g, right? Nope, not the Jehovah Witnesses. It says, no one has seen God, no article. They're supposed to put a little g there, but they don't because the reference is a reference to the Father. So the Jehovah Witnesses, okay, instead of putting a little God there, places a capital G there for their readers to see. Though the Greek text doesn't have an article. In other words, what I'm saying is this. In John 1.1, 1, 1, oh, they're holy and righteous. We're not going to put the capital G there because there's no article there. Okay? But when it comes down to talking about God the Father and there's no article, they still capitalize it as a capital G. Now watch this. But when you get to the only begotten God, Ho is there. The article is there. Okay? So, the, so technically, if you want to like translate the Bible freely without a grand bill sharp rule, if you want to follow Jehovah Witnesses, this is what you should have said, stated. This, if you want to show yourself to people that you're the true organization, the way you claim, start by translating the Bible correctly. First of all, start by not being so arrogant that you have your own Bible. Duh, okay? But look, if you want to be truthful to everyone, translate the Bible right, because watch what the text says. The manuscript you use say this. No one has seen little case God, except for the only begotten capital G God. According to the text, the only begotten God is Jesus with a capital G. According to the text, the no one has seen God has a lowercase g. But guess what the Jehovah Witnesses do? They switch it. They switch it. So in their translation of the Bible, it says this. No one has seen God, capital G. They make it capital G with no article whatsoever. And then they go, except for the only begotten God. And then they make that a lowercase g when the article is there. Trickery. Okay? So that's what I mean by you don't, you don't dictate what the Bible says just because you're a Christian and you believe in the Trinity. You don't dictate what the Bible says just because you're a Jehovah's Witness or you're a Seventh-day Adventist or you're a Mormon. You don't get to do that. You have to follow the text. And, that, and, and, the, and the Bible must have known that Jehovah's Witnesses would have come along later and, and try to screw things up because the way John wrote that thing, <laughs> they, they got tricked. <laughs> okay, if you don't want to apply the rule in John 1-1, guess what? I'm going to catch you in John 1-18. <laughs> You don't fool around and you don't play around with the word of God. So I want to thank my staff. You know, that's a Graceland original that the Jehovah Witnesses, they flip that thing around. So the next time you got a comment, Mr. Jehovah's Witness, don't come quoting us something you read out of your book. You know, okay. Don't come there commenting, quoting something out of a Bible that is your Bible. Of course it's going to be right. <laughs> You translated it. <laughs> okay? So anyway, I just want to quickly say, before, uh, let, me, let me go ahead and finish this, okay? It says this. It goes on to say, the word was with God, and the word was divine, or was a God. No, no. See, liberals, 
Here's the problem. When you read Colossians 2.9, Colossians 2.9 says that, di that Jesus is deity, Theohotes, in bodily form. So the Bible dictates how you should look at things. Okay? So the Bible tells you that Jesus is deity. Now, you don't get to translate <clears throat> the word deity any kind of way you want to. But liberals like the Moffat translation and liberal translations out here, right? They want to use the word divine. See, the word divine is lower than the word deity. See, the word, people use the word divine. That's, you know, even the Catholics, they use that word divine to show that there's something lower than God, that there's, there's a transfinite realm. Okay? But the Bible wasn't written with the idea of an infinite realm, a transfinite realm, and a finite realm. So the Bible doesn't carry this, this idea of someone being divine but not being deity. Okay? And you know how I know that? It's called the Pharisees. Okay? Because to the Pharisees, it made no difference. <laughs> if you were a man claiming to be God, you were going to get stoned. Okay? <laughs> they didn't care whether you come from a finite realm or a transfinite realm. They're going to stone you, okay? <laughs> you hear me? So you can call Theohotes, you can call it divine all you want to. <laughs> and Jesus is going to go, look, you can't stone me. I'm a lowercase g. <laughs> I'm not a big g. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. That is funny, though. Okay? They may cut that for the video. We don't normally, we don't edit our videos, but we might cut that. <laughs> okay? But, <laughs> but yeah, the, the Pharisees, man, them, them jokers didn't care. You can't go around here claiming, you can't make yourself a mere man calling yourself God. And that's what John 5, 18 says. And, and here's, look, you can cheat with John 10, 33. Okay, if you want to cheat with the Greek, you can. But you can't cheat with John 5, 18. Because that word there is equal, it's iso, like an isotope. Because you're a man and you make yourself equal to God himself. And we're going to kill you for that. And Jesus is like, well, he want to kill me. I do good works. If you don't believe me, at least believe the works that I have done. And the Pharisees are like, oh, we're not going to kill you for a fine work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're going to kill you because you claim to be a little G. From no, they didn't say that. They said, we're going to kill you because you claim to be from God. You see, to a, to a, to a Pharisee, they, this, this is how they're, they're thinking. When you read John, the text tells you. That people were going around saying, man, this guy is doing a lot of good works, but he must be demonic. And then other people kept saying, man, he can't be demonic. A demonic man can't do such fine works. Okay? So those were the two options. Either he was demonic or he was not. The Pharisees came up with a third option. This is what got them into trouble. They said, you know what? He might not be demonic. Okay? And he's doing all these good works, but he's still a man. So there's someone behind him that's helping him do these works. We don't believe that you come from the Father. Someone is behind you. And you must cast out these demons by whom? They said Satan. And Jesus like, oh Lord, you messed up now because you just blasphemed, dude. And I can't forgive you for that. That's what their third option was, okay? It, either, either he was, a, either he was a, 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 a sent from God and he was doing these good works or he was just a demonic person to do good works. And people had enough sense to go, well, a demonic man can't do good works. The Pharisees came up with a third option, got themselves in trouble. My whole point in bringing that up is this. <laughs> You can play around and you can, you can say finite and divine and all of that. You can do all of that if you want to, but you can't play around with human history. And the, and the Pharisees, they were going to stone him because he was a man who claimed to be equal with God. Okay, so all this other stuff you're going to write, for example, when you say, that is, the word was a powerful God-like one. Hey, so what? Pharisees, Pharisees would have stoned him. Okay? Then they're going to say, uh, clearly, Jesus is not Almighty God. Clearly, we say that. He is not the Father. Okay? He is deity, deity in bodily form. 
Okay? He's a great God, as Paul calls him and Peter calls him. The great God, our great God and Savior. Okay? There's, there's no distinction there. Okay, glorify me. I mean, there's no distinction in, 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 in essence and nature there. There's a distinction in person. Okay, and then he goes on to say, they go on to say, in fact, Jesus spoke of his father as my God and as the only true God. Dude! <laughs> so, you want to quote John when John says that Jesus says my God. But you don't want to quote Psalms and you don't want to quote Hebrews. Where God is called God. Therefore God. Your God. Okay? Therefore God. Your God. Hebrews. Psalms. <laughs> Therefore God. Okay? Your God. <laughs> okay? It doesn't matter whether you say my God Okay, or if God says to Jesus, you're God, they're both called God. And the Pharisees would have stoned them. The Pharisees wouldn't have stoned the Jesus of the Jehovah Witnesses. The Pharisees would not have stoned the Jesus of Arius. The Pharisees would not have stoned the Jesus of, uh, uh, or tried to stone the Jesus of, 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 of uh, the Muslims. The Jesus the Pharisees tried to stone was the Jesus who was deity in bodily form. You know what's sad, Jehovah Witnesses? You can't believe that. But King Herod did. King Herod wanted to know where the child was so he could worship him. You know why? Because they read Michael 5 too. They knew he was going to be born in Bethlehem, but they also knew his origins were from of old. His origins were from of old. That required him to be worshipped. I'm telling you, you walk around with your own Bible telling yourselves you're right. That is crazy. That's nuts. That's almost borderline insanity. To embrace circular reasoning that way. Hopefully, man, through one of these videos, hopefully the Holy Spirit will convict you guys of sin, judgment, and righteousness. Hopefully. That's all we can do is to persuade you and defend the faith and pray that the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin, judgment, and righteousness. Join us for part 12. It's coming up soon. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more from Graceland Ministries, please subscribe, share, and support us financially online using the links in the description.